Hey, welcome into Carpool with Ben. Folks, the quarantine edition continues and everything is going well. Hope you are staying home and staying safe. Listen, it's it's baseball season now. And if you came to a Paw Sox game towards the end of last year, you may have seen a young, up-and-coming, good-looking, very handsome player coming up through the ranks. And uh, his name became synonymous with some public address announcer who had the feeling that he had to overemphasize it. Josh Akami, first baseman in the Red Sox organization, joins me. Josh, good to see you, sir. Great and, seeing you, uh, too. And uh, the first time we've officially met. You know, I really wish I wasn't seeing you this time of the year because you were playing up in Boston. That will happen. I believe it, and I know it's going to come true. But you are uh, you were down at spring training, and, and now you're kind of in this holding pattern as everybody else is. How are you doing? Um. I, you know, I, I, I think I'm doing well. Um, you look great. <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was tough um, at first because, you know, we were down in spring training. We, uh, you know, we had our routine going. Um, you know, we, we were scheduled to play games. Um, I was in uh, major league camp, so I was already playing games. I felt good. And, um, you know, for it to come to a stop like this, it, you know, really – was tough at first because, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, man, where am I even going to work out or, um, you know, you know, really stuff like that. But, um, you know, after I want to say three or four days of, uh, Mari and Jerry Springer, I, uh, was like, all right, I, I need to get up and, uh, do something. So, well, that's good. I mean, it, it, and it, it was one of those situations where it just came to like an abrupt stop. It wasn't even like a like a ramp down. It was just like, mm-hmm. hey, this is it. Yep. Go home. Uh, did you did you fly down there and fly back home, or did you drive? Uh, I, I drove. I drove. Did you notice and a lot of traffic on the way back? Because there's not a lot of traffic out there now. It was unbelievable. Really? Like, like I'm sorry. Like unbelievably, like no, like crazy no traffic. Yeah. Like. I got through DC in probably about 10 minutes. It felt like, um, yeah, I mean, there there was no traffic at all. Like even, I mean, I, you know, I broke it up in two days, but, um, still I didn't, I didn't hit any traffic. Well, you're, you're safe at home, which is in uh, Philadelphia, correct? Yes, correct. And uh, that's that's where you're at. So you've you've been doing your workout routine. You're trying to keep everything going and just waiting for that green light. How did you get into baseball? Uh, well, uh, my, well, started with, uh, my dad, um, he, you know, put me and I have a twin brother as well. Oh, okay. uh, we, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, played T-ball together, you know, little league together, um, you know, all the way up and he had us play in multiple sports. Um, we had baseball, basketball and football and, um, you know, we, you know, we kind of both just played that. Uh, growing up, um, it, it wasn't until about like eighth grade I, you know, said, "All right, like I, I want to play just baseball." Yeah. Um, and you know, because going into my high school year, uh, my high school came off being like the number two uh, team in the nation at the oh, time. Wow. Yeah, they. Uh, I went to Saint John Newman and Maria Goretti High School down in South Philly. Okay. And the year before, I think they lost by like two or three or maybe four points to St. Patrick's and they had uh, the number one team in a country. So they had like Kyrie Irving, Michael Kidd, Gil Chris, uh, and like three or four other guys that went high, like D one. So, um, yeah. So that's when I figured I was like, okay, I don't think I can make the team here. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just playing baseball throughout high school, going through the travel ball circuit and, um, you know, event, that eventually got me to here. So, do you feel like uh, you know those early experiences and going through that is kind of helping you as far as digging down now? Because all all things pointing to that you are just on a great trajectory with your career, and all of a sudden there's something way beyond your control. You can't work. You can't rehab around this. It's you've got to kind of dig down and just keep yourself ready. Do you are you tapping into that? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. Um... Again, it's like you said, it's completely out of our control. Um, I mean, the most we can do is just, you know, try our best to, you know, whatever it is, do at home workouts or, you know, maybe, you know, you have a friend who, you know, uh, has a couple, you know, 
uh, exercise equipment. Um, and, you know, you guys may link up and, you know, get the most out of that workout. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's a, that's the most, and unfortunately that's the best we could do right now. So, wow. um, let's talk a little bit about you personally. Uh, you are, uh, you, you're very approachable. The community loves you. What are some of the things that are important to you? I mean, there's a ton of great community causes out there. What, what's something that, uh, is, is near and dear to you or something that really touches, uh, you know, hits on a certain chord with you? Well, just as like a personality wise, you, you know, it's, I find hard is, you know, it's, I don't know. We always say it, it's not hard to be a good person. So I always take that, you know, really deep. I never want to come off as, you know, rude or, you know, snob, snobbish or anything. I, I really just want to, um, you know, really try to make my best impression. Uh, Cause again, like you, especially with people like you don't know, cause again, like you don't, you don't know who this person could be and, um, again, like I, I, I've ran into many certain uh, times where I was introduced to someone and then find out that, you know, Hey, this guy is this, or this person is this. And, um, again, you just, you, you just never want to, you know, have a stain on, you know, your personality. So, so. I was never good at sports growing up. That's why uh, I'm I'm the PA announcer, and and we'll just <laughs> gladly announce your name and 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 interview in situations like this. Uh, obviously, you're at a, a, a great professional level now. You, you ever drive back by? Well, you can't really do it now because of the whole social distancing. But before, you ever drive by like a, a little league field and you see kids just playing a pickup game? You ever just want to like go there and say like, oh yeah, yeah, and just crank one over the field? Uh, just yeah. to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it, it's funny to think it's funny to think about that, but um, but yeah, I mean, like there there's times you drive by and you're just like, man, like I remember playing on these fields when you know I was nine, ten, eleven years old, and uh, you know it really brings back some you know crazy memories where you know like I remember my first home run, I was like nine years old and uh, I, my first ever home run, nine years old, I hit a walk off home run, um. And I don't, I like, I didn't know what was going on at the time. <laughs> Cause I, it's like, I, I mean, I didn't know what a walk off home run was at, you know, eight or nine years old. So, um, but yeah, it, it's funny. You just look back at those times. You're like, man, like, like that's almost like, you know, you try to bring that same fun, you know, that you, you know, play today. I only learned what a walk off was about five years ago when I started doing this. Game, so don't don't worry. Uh, it's you, you, you're 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 an early uh, high achiever right there. Uh, all right, let's have a little bit of fun here. Uh, let's talk. I mean, I know you're in a very healthy regimen right now, and I'm sure you're getting sick of the same quarantine foods. But uh, favorite ice cream flavor? Oh man, I, I so I don't know. I, I get in mood sometimes. Sometimes I like. Uh, a really good scoop of you know vanilla bean ice cream okay with some uh you know maybe throw some ch some chocolate or maybe some chocolate fudge in there too um but man I, there's also times where you know you walk into like cold stone or something you're like man like this birthday cake with some reese's and some you know <laughs> brownies in it, it it this would definitely this would definitely hit right now all right uh favorite show growing up uh you, with your twin brother perhaps Man, I don't, I don't know because like, like we were big like Cartoon Network okay. kids, really big Nickelodeon kids. Um, I, I mean, I get you can't go wrong with SpongeBob, right? I mean, every time SpongeBob's on now, I, you know, I'll still turn it Do on. You really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you so. go down? Do you do you go on YouTube and just go down rabbit holes of like these these different shows and stuff from time to time? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, right now, I find myself in a rabbit hole with uh, America's Got Talent okay. right now, because I don't know what it is about, like, good voices and, you know, good singers. If I get a good singer, I'm on that for, you know, you know, you know. I'll look up at the time and like, man, where did the past hour go? <laughs> so, Do you sing? Do you have any uh, musical? Uh... No, Come I, on. I, I wish I could sing. I wish. Believe me, if I could sing, everybody would know I could sing. <laughs> so. 
you're a very humble person though so I, I have a feeling like deep down inside there might still be a little bit of that <laughs> you know that 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 grind there to uh to, to belt one out what's on your ipod right now uh right. I, sh I shouldn't say ipod that that makes me really sound like the 39 year old that i am um what is on your playlist right now so it's funny right now because i was just talking about good voices right um i can i can tell you exactly what's on the past three like on my apple music the past three search uh things i did marvin gay whitney houston and the isley brothers wow so you, you are you're going for the maybe that's a, is that what inspires you i like, hey i i just love good voices like um you know like and again like it doesn't matter like i'd be like man like this guy doesn't make good you know his songs aren't that popular but but i mean like these guys are like really really once in a lifetime voices so yeah what's the first concert you ever went to <laughs> um i think i was eight or nine years old or maybe even 10, I, I think, um, I went to a Temptations concert. Did you really? With, yeah, they, uh, Who my took dad you? took me. My dad. Wow. Because it was, uh, I remember I was obsessed with the, the Temptations movie that came out. Okay. And I you know, listened to the songs, like, all the time. I had, like, a CD of the Temptations, and uh, just so happened they were in Philly, and, um, you know, my dad, uh, my dad took me. So oh, that's 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 great. I mean, uh, for for most kids, especially your age, it might have been, you know, Miranda Cosgrove or, or you know those those younger groups out there. You you mm -hmm. attempt that's uh, duly noted. And uh, I know Joe Jacobs is watching this, so we need to get some Temptations music into the rotation there for uh, pregame warm up when the season comes back, because I know it's going to come back. Uh, as you are going through the the rest of this quarantine, what is uh what do you what do you say to people? What do you say to those those younger talents, especially those college students that kind of get the season, the rug pulled out from under them? Uh, what, what do you say to encourage them? You know, you know, unfortunately, this is, you know, this happened. So, um, again, like you, you can only focus on the things that you can control. So, um, you know, to like the college seniors, you know, a lot of them got. Um, that extra year um, of eligibility. So, I mean, it's, you know, hey, you know, hey, you got a second chance, you know, don't, Something, don't something's blow it. better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, don't blow it. I mean, you were working hard and, you know, unfortunately it it happened, but hey, you know, they, they bless you with another chance. So, you know, keep working hard and, you know, prove, you know, again, prove to them that they were right making that second chance. All right, I know you're from Philadelphia. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant to go to there in Philly? And when you're up yeah. here in Rhode Island for, uh, for, for baseball, what's your favorite <laughs> restaurant around here? All right. So in Rhode Island, the roadie hen, that is my breakfast spot. Okay. Like, I, I think I'm there probably mm -hmm. once a homestand. What, what's, what, what is breakfast for, for, uh, a, a six foot one, <laughs> you know, uh, triple A ball player. So I used to think I could eat a lot. And uh, I went to the Roadie Hen, and uh, I got pancakes and omelet with the potatoes and all that. And um, and I was sitting there, and I, you know, I got halfway through the omelet and halfway through the potatoes, and I'm like, I'm full right now. I can't even. <laughs> I won't even touch these pancakes. Yeah. So, um, but yet, yeah, but uh, I, I try to keep it healthy. Um, you know, a good amount of cars proteins and i had started this year getting a lot of um you know more ve veggies in me too so um but i'm trying to think my favorite restaurant uh in philly all right i will say there's this one pizza spot down in south philly it's, uh, not too far from the stadiums it's uh it's called celebrees pizza okay and i've been going there since i was a, like baby <laughs> and my parents have been going there for around like 35, 36 years now. Yeah. And I mean, this, this spot, uh, it never disappointed me. Yeah. Never. That's good. So. Well, hey, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, when things clear up and, and we get uh, back to, to normal, uh, breakfast on me at the Roadie Hen. It'll be a good time. Folks, uh, you could follow Josh on social media on the various channels. We'll link them in the description. And also, if you are a young athlete 
If you're trying to, to get into the next level, whatever level it is, you can watch and follow the path of this young man right here, Josh Akami, because you, 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 you were very impressive last year. It was great when you came up here. And I got to tell you, the, the, the growl, uh, that came from little foster man because he, he always tried to imitate what I was doing. And I just, it just, the Akami, and I did it one time. And then he's me, like he has the tiniest little voice. It was, it was, it was funny. So I told my wife, I said, you know, we're going to FaceTime the next game when he's up and I'll do that. And that's just kind of how it started going. So uh, I, I hope that inspires you. Or if it doesn't, you can just go ahead and take out a restraining order and I'll, I'll be, I'll be out of your, out of your way, sir. No. And believe me, I actually have something to tell you. I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's funny. <laughs> And you know what's even funnier? The umpire I've had multiple times where the umpire and the catchers start laugh like start laughing too because they love it. So I that's what I wanted to, to, to tell you for like the longest time. So it's uh so I would say, hey, like just I, I love it. I think I think everybody loves it. Uh, so it's been fun and you know, I, I try to I, I try to have a little bit of fun with it, but it's always entertaining to watch you and the entire team out there. Folks, stay tuned because we're gonna do something. <laughs> Something's gonna happen yeah. and, and uh, you know, shout out to all the doctors, the nurses, the scientists, the first responders out there, all those health professionals. I mean, people you've worked with on a regular basis, Josh, obviously mm-hmm. over there in Philly, you guys are seeing uh, just how well they're working as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I have friends who are, uh, you know, nurses and um, and I mean, I, I can't believe it when they tell me that, you know, they've had to, you know, work that 12 hour shift. And, and I can't imagine with, you know, this pandemic going around, too. So it's not, you know, you think about it, it's like, man, they're putting their own health and um, at risk here, too. And, you know, for them. You know, I I personally say thank you. You know, thank you very much. You know, we I, we really appreciate it, and I think they deserve the most, you know, high you know respect right now. Now it certainly puts a lot of things in perspective, and once everything is down, I know we're all going to do our best to give people the best entertainment and 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 a good family uh, outing and and just a great time, sir. You be safe. Uh, good luck with your workouts, and hopefully we'll see you sooner than later. Josh Akami, ladies and gentlemen. Go follow him. He, 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 trust me, you, you're going to follow him. Ben, thank you very much for having me on. Stay thank safe. Thank you. Sure.